Welcome to the Rocket MSP Podcast. I'm your host, Steve Taylor. The following is an interview with Nash from PodcastMate. She has a really neat work background, but bouncing between Thailand, Australia, the Philippines, and the U.S. for marketing and business development. In 2020, she started PodcastMate to produce immersive audio stories, not just podcasts. Today, we will discuss what you need when it comes to starting your own podcast. Keep listening for the entire interview. Who are you? Um, you know, podcast mate, and then what? Why? Why are we talking? Like, what makes you some some expert on podcasts? Right. Mm-hmm. Um. Okay, that's gonna be a little bit of a long story, but let's let's cut it short. Uh, my background is psychology, and then mm-hmm. I started working for um an American publishing company. Um, for about six, seven years. So I was helping them doing marketing for their books. Mm -hmm. Eventually I hit a ceiling. And so I'm originally from the Philippines. I hit a ceiling and I was like, there was nothing for me to aspire for anymore. Like it's nothing exciting. And so I decided to travel. Um, I've been traveling and working online. I got into like SaaS. So I was working for tech startups as a consultant. I would help them with marketing, come up with packages or set up like, um, partnerships. Um, so I was doing this since um, 2017. And eventually, b- during the pandemic um, on 2020, at that time, I was, I was working for a, a media, an outdoor magazine also for and also for another tech startup based in Australia, I was working online in Thailand. Um, but I don't know, like, because of the pandemic, like it just this was March 2020. It just like cost me to do a lot of introspection that I realized, you know what, like, this is the perfect time for me to actually take a pivot, like really do what I want to do. Like, I want to make sure that every single day I do exactly what I want to do. Um, because when I was working for startups, like, I was good at it. Um, the money was good, but like, that's it. Like, I, I, I wanted I wanted something more. And the pandemic made me realize that. And so my friend and I, um, she's based in, in the U.S. at that time, we decided to start PodcastMate. Initially, the goal was to just um, provide podcasters like a show notes writing service. So that was the initial idea. Um, and when we had this conversation, I was like, okay, let's do it. Let's, um, why don't we give ourselves two weeks to launch it? Because if we're going to wait until everything's perfect, we're never going to launch anything. So we bootstrapped everything. Like we started for $50. Um, We bootstrapped everything. And then we launched on end of March, end of March, March 30th. Eventually, we decided to like create like instead of just show notes writing service, we decided we got on, we got like someone else on board who's good at um, audio production, another um, co-founder. and so we created like the entire, like a full suite of service for podcasters from editing, audio editing, marketing, all of that. So that's how it started. And eventually it just became, they did their own thing and I focused on podcast mate. Um, so that's that, that's the initial story. And I wanted to focus more on my niche is I wanted to focus more on uh, working with people, with thought leaders, you know, like people who are inspiring. I want to surround myself with people who are inspiring. I want to people who are actually like thought leaders who want to inspire people, add value to people. So that's kind of like our, our niche. Um, and yeah, and this is where you are now. That's pretty good. <laughs> that's very cool. So let's talk about, you know, getting started. So, mm-hmm. you know, with, with these IT guys who want to start a podcast, do they need to, you know, record a bunch of episodes before they actually launch it? Or can they literally just like record an episode and launch? My suggestion is to prepare four episodes and record it immediately. Like schedule, let's say, do you want to batch work everything so you don't get exhausted? Because that's what like, that's where you lose your passion, you know, every single week trying to like um, interview people. instead. What I would do, what I would recommend you do, 
um, reach out to people you want to interview, schedule mm -hmm. one week where you interview everyone. So your mindset is just interview. That's the mindset. Once you get all the interviews already, let's say the second week, your mindset will be, okay, I'm just going to edit this because this is not your full-time job, right? Um, you have other jobs too. So you want to make sure when you do like um, one thing at a time, your mindset is just focused. So you could really like um, lose yourself in doing it. Um, so first interview, second, focus on editing. Like you want to make sure you, that you take out everything that does not serve the plot. So you have to, uh, the main thing that I think first thing that you need to think about is what message do I want to get across to people? Who is my audience? Um, how do I differentiate myself in the marketplace? Because everyone is doing, everyone is launching a podcast. Like, why do you think people will listen to you? Unless you have something very specific to say, and you have to be really um, solid about what you have, like have a really strong conviction, you know, this is my message. These are the people I want to serve and be sure about yourself. Um, so yeah, we were like interview editing. Once you like finish all the editing, the third thing is then you like write your show notes or run the, do like micro content where you, um, it's a content repurposing where you take out like um, maybe a minute of a sound bite from the episode or create like an audiogram, an Instagram audiogram, um, micro videos if you do that. So then you can have something to distribute um, in all the social media platforms because the goal is you want to use this to entice people to get on to, the, to your long form content, which is the, um, the actual episode, right? Mm -hmm. um, you need to make sure that people will not going to know you if you don't, and they're not going to sit down and actually commit to listening to one hour episode if you don't entice them. So you got to find something like a gem, like a golden nugget that will get them to listen to your episode. Um, so for example, if you want to launch, let's say you want to focus on one month, have these stages, week one, week two, week three. Um, but before, actually, before you run the interview, you want to do like a pre-production. What does that mean? That means you want to already know, um, kind of like already have an idea before running the interviews, kind of already had an idea. This episode, this is the topic that I want to focus on. Episode two is going to lead up to the, um, to the next one, to the next one, to the next one. Why? You want to have a story. Don't, you don't want to just like, um, interview random people just for the sake of having an interview, might as well not do it. Like, why? Because that's what everyone else is doing. And again, you don't want to be like everyone else. You want to make sure that when you show up, people will see uh, that he's actually trying to make a point. He's leading up to something. There is a story behind this. It's not just doing things randomly. So then it would make, as a, as a, um, as a listener, it would make me feel like, okay, I want to listen to this. I want to continue to um, it's kind of like a journey, you know, you want to lead them to a journey. You don't just like show up and interview and like um, be unprepared. Um, so really, be, you got to be strategic. First, strategy. Second, execution. So pre-production is a strategy. Execution is that's the production. And then you do post-production. Post-production, this is where you edit. This is where you think about marketing. This is where you like refine like whatever things that you want to refine and then you launch. The launching stage, this is where you double down. So initially, Steve, you were asking, do, do they need to um, record episodes? Yes. Why? So that once you launch, um, once, you, once you already have these four episodes, let's say you do pre-production, production, post-production, post and you got everything ready, and then your mindset then would just be um, promoting all these episodes. You gotta promote, 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 um, because these content, these these are evergreen content, right? There is no it's like, um, there's no time expiration, and so then you can save yourself like all the the exhaustion of like, oh, it's kind of it's, it feels like a because this is what what I noticed is this is what um, podcasters feel like. Uh, I think I had um a consultation meeting two weeks ago and this po th this podcaster he's he has a business he has a firm he's been doing a podcast so he doesn't really have like a dedicated team um who does the podcasting uh who does the what do you call this like helping him do the things 
And so it was like, okay, I've already run a hundred episodes. Now I'm just exhausted. It's just like every week I have to like this to grind. I'm like, yeah, well, if you, it's going to be, it's going to feel like a grind if you do it that way, because your mindset, you're always like changing your mindset, right? And that's exhausting. You can't like give a hundred percent of you if you keep on changing the, the changing of the mindset um, or the change. Yeah. The changing of the mindset when you shift to like a different stage, it takes so much mental, mental energy and you don't want to do that. So yeah, that's kind of the idea. <laughs> now you said uh, you don't want to just like interview random people because that's what everybody else does. Mm -hmm. wah, wah. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> uh but so so I, I i feel like i have a format to my show mm -hmm. you know so i've i i do i i kind of interview i'll call it random people but i i look for vendors and industry experts to come on and educate uh managed service providers and it consultants on what tools are available, how to, how to run a better business, you know, how to be a better service provider. So I think there's a story, but I feel like it's more each episode is self-contained. So I don't have like a month of, we're just going to talk about security and I'm going to lead you on a journey for the whole month. I just want to lead you on a journey through each episode. That's okay too, but that is what everyone is doing. Right. So the question is, do you want to be like everyone? Um, or do you want to be different? Because well, here's my the mindset thing. Mm -hmm. everyone's like me. <laughs> that's that's my mindset. My mindset is I'm doing it the way that I want to do it, and I'm and I'm like I'm not worried about how everyone else is doing it because even though I'm doing it in the fashion that everyone else is doing it, I still feel like what I'm doing is unique. And that may sound dumb, but you also don't know a whole lot about the podcast. So I, it would be silly for us to sit here and argue that for an hour. We could though, mm. and I win. I, that, that's not my, that is not my point though. Like you can no, definitely no. do, this is like as a, as a podcast, the good thing about like having a podcast and running it um, mm -hmm. on your own is you can actually like absolutely do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. But right now what we're talking about is how do you want to, to send a solid message to your yes. audience that would, um, that would elevate um, their life? that would elevate yes. whatever they're doing. Like if you want to add value to people, like how do you hone in on that message? So every episode is self-contained. Yes, absolutely. Um, that is perfectly fine if that's what you want. But if we're talking about how do I differentiate myself in the marketplace so that people will think, my audience will, will think that I am an expert in this. I'm, I'm a subject matter expert. How do I position myself as that? How do I position myself as a thought leader so that I can build credibility. People will know that I actually know what they're talking, what I'm talking about. People will know that I have connections to these people, which that the, the people uh, you bring on your, uh, your um, show, their credibility, their reputation will uh, brush off on you. So you have to be very strategic as well. Um, so anyhow, for example, let's say compare one podcast that would as self-contained, really good episode, episode per episode. But this other podcast, um, one one season, six months, uh, first month, four episodes focused on well, uh, uh, something that let let's say for 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 podcast mate, for example, um, we have our own episode, but how we structured our our podcast is very different. Um, but just for this one, um, let's say. You focus on how do you monetize um, your podcast. So just one whole month, you bring subject matter experts that will tackle different points. Then people will think, 
oh yes, now next week they're going to talk about this and then they're going to talk about this. So that's where you're really bringing in value because you're not just like um, scratching the surface. You're actually genuinely want to bring value to people by ensuring that you cover all your bases. So that's kind of my point in that. And then month two, this one, you focus on this one. So it's really like going, going deeper. Um, I, I guess that is my point. Like everyone is scratching the surface and that is fine. But what is your purpose? Is it really to deliver value or is it just to have a podcast? So that's kind of like, yeah. I like that. that I like that. All right. So let's, let's talk about, um, so we've, we've recorded a few episodes. We've, we've done some pre-production mm -hmm. and that basically looks like, you know, kind of, uh, forming the journey and writing out the, you know, if you're interviewing someone, writing out questions that you want to ask them, you, you would not recommend making the whole thing script based though. Like you don't want me to ask a question that I already know how they're going to answer it because I've already written the answer or we've already gone back and forth. Would you? Um, no, 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 I wouldn't. Yeah. If, if it's scripted, like then it's not, it's not a fun, it's not going to be a fun conversation any longer. Like if you mm -hmm. talking points, it's really good. So when you shared me some talking points, I'm like, okay, now I know what I, what I, what I uh, need to like hone in on. Um, that was good. So then I could really focus, but then scripted, like people will know, like people can sense that this is scripted. Like what's the point of this? I could just like read like a blog or something. Right. And I, I agree with that. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't missing the, the message. And you know, I think there are some podcasts that are scripted that are really cool, but those are more story based and they're not mm -hmm. interviews. So I think depending yes. on what kind of podcast you're going for, a script does make sense. So sure. if it's just you, your or you know like you and a colleague and you guys are just telling a story, that's probably something you should script out so that way you don't have a lot of ums and uhs and all that garbage. True to have to cut out because you know exactly what you're going to say. Whereas if it's an interview, it should be more organic. Here's some talking points. Here, here are some of the questions, at least big picture questions that I want to ask, and then we'll dive deeper from there. I completely agree because while you're doing the interview uh, with your guest, you're also building a relationship. And mm -hmm. you never know where it can lead later on. So having this organic connection and like knowing, oh, this is how we connect in this. We agree with this one. And this one, we have like different school of thought. Um, so it's, you know, it's it's nice to like have like a, a genuine connection just to see. And um, also like as a, I know most of your audience are in IT, it's good practice for them to be able to know how to like engage with people, how to connect with people. So it's not even just about, putting yourself out there as a thought leader, stuff like that. It's really um, getting into the mindset of once I put myself out there, I'm building the social skills. I'm building my own confidence because at the end of the day, the, the, like you think about it, I'm like, you know, it's, it's a win. It's a win regardless if it's not like perfect or the fact that you did it, like putting it, you putting yourself out there is not easy. So that is already a win, right? Um, it's a good practice and you can think about it like just to make you feel good, not like not too much pressure so you can still enjoy. Think about it like, oh, it's a practice. And then the next one, it's a practice. And then the more you practice, your quality gets better and you don't, you look back and you realize, oh, wow, like I've, I've gone so far from where I started. I like that. All right. So let's. Let's go back to the basics. Mm -hmm. What kind of gear does somebody need to start a podcast? Um, I would recommend to get a decent microphone. Um, what I'm using is you're using a roadcaster. Road, road mic, yeah. What pod I'm sorry, mic? You're using a pod mic. Pod mic, yeah. 
I have a pod mic and then I'm using um, Scarlet Solo. Uh -huh. That's it. Um, pod mic and start so plug it in my plug it in my laptop and that's it. Um, sometimes when I'm doing narration voiceovers for our podcast, I have like a soundboard just to make sure that it's contained and like you know uh, I could like um, get the sound that I like. But generally for a podcast like this, a, a good mic and podcast pod mic is not, I don't think that's expensive. It's I think about, that's about a hundred dollars, a hundred dollars, a hundred dollars us for the pod mic. And then you see a lot of these bigger podcasts. They're using the Shure SM seven B and it's a fantastic mic. It absolutely is. But at $500, you don't need that mic. I'm using a Rodecaster Pro or, or a Procaster. It's it's not a USB one. I'm trying to get it in the frame here. Ah, oh, it's that's that's a, is that a new one? Is it a new model? I don't think so. The only difference with let me I'm going to mute myself so I can take the the windscreen off. Okay. or pop filter or whatever it's this thing's technically called just because i think once that's off you'll recognize it from some other shows so mm, it's okay. it is a pretty it's a pretty commonly used microphone um i i always recognize it by having these diagonal lines and then you know just this kind of shape here to it mm -hmm. but uh this mic i feel because i i was actually able to test it i've i'm i'm lucky in that i'm also in the like av industry in some mm -hmm. regard because i i volunteer at my church and i've got a friend who's an audio integrator so he gave me literally like more than a dozen microphones just to test them all out and see how so they all cool. sounded and so i i had like i, I had an sm7b i had a thousand dollar Heil mic i had i had all kinds of amazing microphones and what i found was this one sounds pretty darn close to the expensive ones and for what was this like 250 or something like that it was a heck of a lot more cost effective than buying something that cost five hundred to a thousand dollars when you're not really getting a big quality boost. And honestly, exactly. and honestly, the difference between mine and yours is not big enough to really warrant the the additional spend. The extra. Mm -hmm. But I'm a mic nerd, so I just I wanted a a different mic for you know my own personal nerdy reasons. <laughs> so with podcasts i feel like more and more podcasts are also video like you and i right now we're doing video yeah this will go on you know spotify and uh apple podcasts and all those platforms but it's also going to go up on youtube and i've also applied i'm still waiting to hear back but i've applied to be able to start doing video on spotify as well so would you say that that is something that if you're starting a podcast, you should just do video or are you okay to still do just an audio podcast? I think I would recommend if you're just starting, focus on audio. Don't like complicate things. If you're just starting, the fact that you show up on audio, just focus on that. Because when you do video, there's going to be a lot of different things that you have to think about. Oh, the lighting, like my setup, like stuff mm -hmm. like that. You want to focus. Once you build the confidence and you're sure about yourself, then slowly build it up. But at first, you know, it's like the just the minimum requirement is already going to be good. Um, video probably later on because it's going to help you like reach other um, other um, audiences. It'll help with SEO when you put it on YouTube. But if you just really want to get started, just focus on audio because then you hit a, you reach a different audience as well. 
And the people who will be listening to your podcast, uh, they can really focus on listening. If you, for example, you think of focus on audio. And so when you show up and you do your podcast, all you think about is, okay, I'm going to make sure that the sound is really good, high quality. And that's all you think about. Once you master that, then you can move on to video. But you can't do both things at the same time if you haven't mastered audio first because podcasting is about audio. Master that. Don't like complicate things if that if it'll, you know, hold you back. I agree completely. I have, you know, this fancy blue light. I've got uh an expensive, it's called a key light in front of me. Um I've actually found when it comes to video, you're better off using a webcam and putting more time, money, and effort into lighting than you are spending True. a bunch of money on the camera and then still having crappy lighting. True, true, true. I agree. It's all about, I'm, I'm not good at video and stuff, but with our, our video producer and podcast mates, um, they tell me about lighting, lighting, lighting. I'm like, I have no idea what you're talking about. This is too technical for me. I can't process this. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, the the lighting... You know, looking looking between, you know, like m my background and then somebody, you know, I'm, I'm just going to say like Joe Rogan. You know, if you look, he's got all these different lights and neon lights and and just different things to look at. It's very visually appealing, whereas I've just got like, you know, here's a couple doors and a blue light. I at least have something to to make me stand out. Mm -hmm. from from my background but there's so much more that i could be doing if i had the appropriate space for it yeah that's true that that's very true um but again for someone who's just starting don't want to overwhelm yourself yeah there's don't. too much there's so much to think about and i did this backwards nash i started with video and now i'm i'm starting to like i'm trying to break into the podcast thing and it's because I'm going backwards. It's it's really hard for me because I'm I'm in my my rhythm. I'm in my pattern mm -hmm. for doing the video stuff. I'm trying to relearn how to do all of this stuff as a podcast now. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what? So yeah, I know you run your live um, interviews and then out. Uh, convert it into a podcast episode but what do you want to focus on because you can't for focus me, on both. Mm. at least for to start with for, you're not really you know starting. i i gotta say that's a good question and i don't really think of it like that i think of it as i should be able to do all of these different things and i don't understand why i'm not awesome at all of them but well, you can't I as a single person, and, and you know, you, you learn this no matter what business you're in. As a single person, you can be, like, really good at one thing, or you can be, like, sort of okay at a lot of things. And you need to figure out which one you want to be. Do you want to be really good at one thing, or do you just want to be sort of okay for the rest of your life? Exactly. I don't want to be sort of okay. So you're right. I, I need to, what I really need to do is start looking at this as an audio podcast that just also happens to have video. Mm -hmm. And so let's, let's talk about some tools. So I, I found this tool called Descript yeah. and I use this tool to basically, um, do my video editing for me because all I'm doing is, you know, I'm, I'm bringing my video in, I'm cleaning up the audio using the studio sound feature, which I'm typically doing more cleaning up on the guest audio. I think between both of our mics today, mine needs more cleaned up, but both of them are, are pretty good. Um, yours is fantastic. Mine's pretty good. Uh, so normally it's, it's just making them sound like they were sitting in a studio instead of mm. in like an echoey cavernous room. Um, just because not every guest I have has a fancy podcast like setup at their desk. 
So that's the biggest thing I do. And then I've started cutting clips out and trying to create clips. And then I've also got just the entire episode. So once I cut my clips out, I'll schedule those and then I'll schedule the entire episode to come like after the clips, just so that way people can get a little taste and then they get the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And I, and all I have to do is I export it as two different, two different methods. You know, I, I select my clip and then I export it once as audio and once as video. Select a new clip, rinse, repeat. So when, when all I have to do is think about it as I've got, I've got my clips and I've got my audio cleaned up, that's good. How, what other tools should somebody consider using when it comes to editing this stuff down? Okay. Um, for, we're talking about someone basics. who's just starting basics. basics. Yes. Um, is Descript really like the, the kind of best, easiest way to get started and then kind of go from there? No, I don't think so. Okay. I think because you want to, Descript, it's like they want to cater to everything. And I don't really subscribe to a mindset like that. Like how I think is I want to focus on just one thing and be really, really good at it. And then like everything else would be just like an addition. But I want people to remember that I'm really, really, really good at audio and it's great. And then they saw me on the video on some YouTube stuff. And then when they got into the audio, when they listened to our podcast, it's really good. So anyway, going back to the question, um, Descript is okay. But if you have like GarageBand, for example, on your laptop, if you're using Mac, I think it's good. Um, if or Logic Pro or Adobe Audition, um, if you want to have a, beca because this is podcasting and podcast is audio, main focus is audio. So you want to have like really good audio. Um, that's what I would recommend. Something like a tool that focuses on what it's supposed to, instead of a tool that is okay with both. Up, de really depends on like. Oh, what see, you and I, I guess, in my opinion, Descript is fantastic. I, it's actually not a very good video tool. It's fantastic at um, the studio sound button. Like, I literally, I hit one button on each piece of audio, and it compresses, DSs, noise gates, equalizes everything, and, and it's all, like, AI-driven. So it, I, I literally, I push a button and the audio is done and it sounds fantastic. Yeah. Um, That's I don't care about the, the only reason I use the part where it's turning the audio to text is if I want to go through and, and remove the ums and uhs and the spaces and audio. And I'm finding that for the video, that's actually really clunky. I don't want to do that on the video. It's okay to do that on the audio version, but I'm almost wondering if I should just leave all that stuff in on both and just focus on making the audio quality fantastic, building my clips and hitting export. Thoughts? I agree. I, I agree with this um, thinking. Um, I guess the reason why for other people who are doing other things, like you, for example, and podcasting is a different platform for you to reach audiences, um, Descript would be good because if you can just press a button, then that's perfect because that will save you so much time. Um, the reason I recommended those software is um, only because with how we work um, in podcasts, we focus more on highly produced podcasts. It's more oh, absolutely. Um, narrative, like immersive sound. So we have to have like all those um, software um, with our, we have sound design. So that that's something that is very technical um yeah and i think for somebody starting out that sound design and and yeah. putting like background music and all that all that really awesome stuff that just puts the icing on the cake we we don't even know where to begin with that stuff 
I'm still like, I don't know when to put music, if I should have music. Um, I, I have no, like when, when should I start thinking about having some kind of like intro video music, something, you know, when, when should I start thinking about creating like after this, after this interview is done, should I be creating a recording of me, um, kind of setting people up for the journey before the actual interview starts, you know, just dumb little things like that. When do I start thinking about doing this stuff? Immediately. Why? Okay. You need to have intro, outro. Why? Because you want to, you, it's like you're building a brand, right? You're building a show. Now, mm -hmm. once, once you have like all these episodes lined up, you want to make sure that people will remember you. And so having a consistent intro, having the intro will like, make them remember you like, oh, this is a sound. Okay. This is this podcast. Um, the outro, it's more like just acknowledgement, something like that. And it would, your guests, for example, whatever, like it's good to be able to have that, um, just to make it sound, it's like a closer, you know, to, to, mm -hmm. to complete something, not like hanging so that the audience will know, okay, this is the end. So you want, you want to like wrap everything and tie everything together and not leave it hanging because that way it would make, make it sound more like thought out, like, okay, this was completed. I th yeah. So build a consistency or like repetition, like, okay, every episode, this is the, this is the intro. Uh, I think you have to, you have to do it like right on the get go. Like think about your intro, think about the intro will also, um, set the minds of the audience of what they can expect out from that show. And so in that intro, you have to be able to um, come up with like a brand promise or like a show promise. Like, okay, my promise is if you listen to this podcast, this is what you will learn. If you listen to this podcast, I will help you do this. I will achieve, I will help you achieve this. I will help you come up with a solution to problems like this. That is your promise. If I'm the listener, I'm like, okay, I'm going to keep listening. Like there's something like you always have to think about what's in it for the audience. That is the intro. Got it. Okay. So now that, now that we've, we've talked a lot about like the content and how to put it all together. So now let's talk about marketing the podcast. I've, I've got this great, this great podcast. You've, you've helped me put this this fantastic thing together, Nash. I put a lot of thought into it. I've got sound design and all that. How do I get people to listen to it? If you have a zero audience yet, you need to first build anticipation. So let's say you put everything together already. You have this. Mm -hmm. um, for your audience, I'm sure they do LinkedIn or they have like a database of... Um, emails of their clients, it's a good start. Send them an email, like a personal email, like not like you, like you're just talking to them like, Hey, I'm starting this project. La la la. This is going to be launched in la la la. So you want to give them some time to like, give them a, um, build like anticipation, build anticipation. So that way they would like to follow, like people like to follow someone's journey. It's, you know, if people, if, they're trying to build something. It's, it's nice to see. Um, so start from there, start from the connections that you already have. Number two, go on LinkedIn and then, you know, like inform people about this project that you're, that you're working on. Let them know that this is the, this is your message or this is your promise, or this is what you're trying to accomplish on this podcast. Number two, you can also like let them know that um, for some people who would be relevant to your audience, you can like already show them, I will be reaching out to some people that I know, like, so you're, you're hitting two Alberts with one stone, you're building anticipation, you're letting them know that you will be launching a podcast next week or in two weeks, something like that. You're also informing them that I may be reaching out to you to get you on the podcast. Um, and people like to, people like to talk about themselves. People like to talk about what they know. Uh, they sure do. They really do. So and that's not a bad thing. 
that is not a bad thing at all because then it's nice to be able to hear other people's stories because you, then you learn from them. You don't have to experience it yourself. And I think that's fascinating, you know, like experiential um, stories about this. So, so now we've, we've kind of built up at least from our network, uh, mm -hmm. getting some people to listen. What if we want to pay to market this thing? Is there, is there a way to like, I don't know, pay to advertise a podcast and, and where do you even do that? I would, podcasting is a, it's a, you're playing the long game. If you're just starting, I would recommend you pay, number two. And number three, I would rather, my th my mindset is I would rather have 100 listeners who are genuinely interested in listening and following my journey, who would tell their friends and their friends of friends who will share, who will share about these episodes rather than paying someone who's just like, um, kind of blasé about, you know, um, content like this just because it's everywhere. So I would rather build solid relationships to your 10 loyal listeners, talk to them, engage with them on Instagram, ask them what they think, um, what they think, what they want to, what, um, topics they want you to talk about, which guest do they want um, for you to like get on the show? If they can, if you can, if they can help you uh, reach out to those guests, like stuff like this, you're building a relationship one at a time, but they're solid. You know, for sure, they're going to stand by you. They're like, you know, this idea of 1000 raving fans um, because you're starting, right? Like paying um, for marketing a podcast. And then what you have 2000 listeners and then what? Like, that's it. Like, it's not going to lead you to more business. But if you focus on having this platform where you showcase your credibility, you showcase thought leadership, build a brand, and then you really engage, having uh, have like deeper connection, engage with your listeners, eventually, um, you you know, people want to do business with the people they know, like, and trust. So if they know that this person, Steve can do this job, he has connection to this one and this one. Oh, I need to talk to Steve. You know, like it, um, like it's kind of like a domino effect, but it's slow and you won't notice it and you would feel like, oh, it's not working. But something's happening in the background. You don't see, you just keep going on. So paying for it, I would, I would strongly, I, I would not recommend um, if you're just starting. Focus on getting really good message, high quality audio, um, working on your content. Like, it's like bootstrap everything. Okay. So instead of spending money, how do we use the podcast to make money? And I don't mean as a passive way to get more customers. I mean, the podcast actually being like a money printing machine. Uh. Number one, it would be, let's say you already have an audience. You've already built a solid audience. You could definitely reach out to brands that you think will be relevant to your audience. Sponsorships. Number two, you can do like um, subscriber paid uh, subscription and Patreon. And there's, there's another, um, I think, Podify. Podify, so there are two platforms that you can use so that you can do like sponsorships. Mm -hmm. um, those are the things that I can suggest because mostly the idea of podcast really is not about monetization. It's really most about using that as, uh, that as a platform to build your credibility, build an audience. And then once you've given them enough value, then monetize it, monetize, monetize it later on. Once you've already proven yourself that you can deliver, you've already demonstrated that you're able to deliver what you promised, then you can monetize. Um, the sponsorships would. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I was just going to say, I personally, I, I don't see the appeal in 
having like a subscription based podcast. True. But I know that there are some out there. When when should you consider a subscription based podcast versus sponsorships versus charging your guests to actually I don't know. I, I and and I I always feel like an a hole saying it like you know charging your guest for the privilege of being on the podcast or you know, whatever. But you know if you think about it, depending on what the topic is, it, it could just be an hour long commercial for their product. True, and you don't want to do that. The moment you start charging your guests, they're gonna use the opportunity to promote themselves. The the mindset is no longer about delivering value. The mindset is how can I make the most out of this? And you don't want to do that to your podcast. It's going to be your own show that's going to be suffering. Yeah. Um, if about the subscription, when to start thinking about it? If you're, once you're able to, if it's very, very technical that you think it's just like educate, very educational, like something that they could not find anywhere, that's when you, when you're sure, for sure that you've, have like highly produced podcast and you know for sure that it's something that think if you think about it if you're the listener will i pay my will i pay um this podcast will i pay five hundred five dollars a month to subscribe to this because the content that he delivers is just so valuable that i just have to have it it's like that mindset will you be willing to pay for your own podcast Mm -hmm. If you can say yes, then go for it. But if not yet, no. Why? Because then you are, um, instead of you being able to build an audience, you're losing audience. And if you're still starting, you need an audience. And how do you do that? Just deliver value, put it out there. And, and yeah, later on maybe, but it's definitely, podcasting is is a long game. So if you don't have the stamina, if you're not passionate about it, you're going to lose your, um, they, they, they call this thing pod fade. You're going to be part of those people. So do you want, would you want that or not? Maybe not because you're building a brand. So monetizing it, I would recommend sponsorships. Um, that would be more direct. And why? Even if you're just starting, but reaching out to these brands already, like learning how to go out there, reach to these brands and just like, let them know that, Hey, I have a, my listeners is very niche. It's very, this is what, um, the value that I delivered to them. And they can be potential customers, potential clients for your company, stuff like that. And then come up with a deal for them and where they can advertise like um, we call it native advertising, where it's it's more like embedded in the show instead of like running a commercial that people can just like um press forward, right? You don't want to yeah. do that. So yeah, I I gotta say I I have a love hate relationship with those. You know, as the as the listener, uh, they drive me nuts. You know, exactly. I, I I'm gonna go right back to the Joe Rogan thing. So Joe Rogan's podcast, you know, throughout, he might have some commercials. And the nice thing is I can just fast forward because each commercial is its own. It's got its own little time bar. So I can just mm -hmm. fast forward through each commercial. But man, he's got like each one's like a minute long and he'll have like five in a row sometimes. And it's like. I'm I'm six minutes in this podcast and you're already sucking five minutes out of me to hear more. So I at what and and for him, I can see why people would stick around because, you know, he's been doing this for over a decade. People know what kind of um uh, what kind of show and what kind of value he has to offer, right? You know, for somebody starting out. That's, that's not as, um, it's not as worth it. So yeah. what can we do to keep the listeners to stay engaged throughout an episode? 
Um, what, you're talking about the commercial thing. This is in connection with the commercials, right? Yeah. So how how do we get them to stay through the commercials and then continue listening the up to the episode? So usually, if there are commercials, I'm I'm I don't really listen to Joe Rogan, um. So I don't know how he runs his commercials, um. But usually we do like native advertising where you embed it in the conversation that it would sound like it's just part of the conversation. You're just planting seeds, priming your um, listeners about it. It's very subliminal, you know? And so you, you're not even aware of it, but it's part of it. And then it, they're, they're putting seeds in your head. And then later on, like later on, they're, they subscribe to this one or bought this one. So you got to be strategic. Um, so that people, you like right now, the game is you can't tell people buy now, buy now. It's that's not the game anymore. You got to be smarter mm. than that, right? Like you, you can't just like run the commercial just like everyone else. You got to be smart. It's got to be subliminal. So what I notice works is if the host actually reads, um, uh, do an ad read, it's not like, like they're just talking. It would it would sound more credible, um, because if you say like, yeah, I I use Streamyard as well for my and I subscribe and I pay for like, just an example, five dollars a month. I also recommend it to my friends. So I think it's really up to you guys who are like doing. It's like they're just talking to your friend, so it's very it's like embedded in the actual conversation, and you'd be like, ah, oh, okay, these are the products he uses hmm, these are the company he subscribes to and then people will it's like a way for you to get people to know you as well <laughs> because they know the things that you buy the things that you use so you're recommending it's like um a genuine recommendation it's not like buy now this one is like, like nobody wants that anymore they're just gonna press forward um so yeah very true. So is this something that's still going to be sustainable in the next 10 years? You know, is, is podcasting here to stay? Yes, absolutely. Podcasting is, we're just getting started. Definitely okay. just getting started. Right now, um, the podcasting game has slowly evolved. So at first, Podcasting was just about interviews or solo podcast, but now we're getting into audio journalism, audio stories, narrative, narrative podcasting, which is what we're doing um, in podcast, in our own podcast, um, because we really believe that you got, if you, if you want people to be engaged in your episode, you got to create an experience for them in a way that they would feel like they're immersed in the story, that they are part of the story. Um, bring, bring them to this, create an auditory experience where they would actually stop and like, listen, like really listen, because it's just so, so good. Now, how do you do that? So immersive podcast, where then you can play with sound design, sound effect, where if I'm typing, there is actually a background noise when I say, yeah, and then I was doing this and I was typing and, uh, and then there's typing. So that's kind of like what we're doing with, in, in Podcast Mate as well. Um, for interview podcast, if you want to tie it into a story, if it's going to be highly produced, uh, I'm not sure if you know, if you listen to Masters of Scale, Reid Hoffman, the uh, founder, of, founder of LinkedIn. So he does interviews um, with CEOs, with founders, or like these people. But when you listen to the podcast, listen to the podcast, it's storytelling. Like it's not an ordinary interview like this. There's narration, there's voiceover, there's sound effects. You'd be like, wow, I'm learning so much, but I'm also being entertained. And I love it. Even, even their commercial. It's highly produced. It's just so good. I don't even skip it um, because I want to listen because it's like, oh, this is interesting because their commercial is also educational. So that's how they embed it into their entire That's genius. Show. That's absolutely genius. 
All right. So I have just a couple more questions for you. Mm -hmm. Um, so you, you just mentioned this podcast. Do you have any other favorite podcasts and what makes them so great? Um, so masters of scale. Number two is flow research collective. Well, their production is not so good, but the guests that they get on the show is really good. The founder is really good. I just listen to it because I'm into, um, flow state and peak performance and stuff. Um, aside from podcast mate, my main thing is I'm, I'm a rock climber, I'm very obsessed with rock climbing. <laughs> Um, and I'm, I'm very obsessed. <laughs> <laughs> I like the ground. It's nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, with, uh, with what's this called? The, with this podcast, I talk a lot about flow state and peak performance, focus, losing yourself in whatever you're doing. And then it's like effort, less effort, something like this. Um, so I listened to it cause I, I learned so much from peak perform peak performance stuff. And number three, I have a lot of favorites, but what is my favorite lately? Um, uh, it's this call, this podcast called finding mastery. It's, it's still about peak performance. Um, but more from an educate, um, psych psychology, neuropsychology background and neuroscience and psychology background. And I love it. It's, they really dig deep into a certain topic and it's quite technical. Um, but if you want to dig deep, this is, this is it. Um, and as a podcaster, you want to, this is a performance. I got to face it. You got to put yourself up that you got to like do best foot forward when you're performing because nobody wants to want people want to listen to your best performance right and so you still like need to hype yourself up and who's gonna do that no one so you listen to the podcast to help you get inspiration from them um listen to how they talk listen to how they talk, ask um questions from their guests how they can get um, their guests to talk about this focus on this one and these podcasts they really hit the mark masters of scale finding mastery and flow research collective it's just, it's super amazing. It, it inspires me a lot um, in terms of how I, how, it helps me in my way and how to think, think, how to, um, how do I put this like, kind of like how to think actually. So the, the last question that I have about podcasts, and I meant to ask this one earlier and I totally missed the mark. What are show notes and how do we make them? Show notes. Show notes are the ones that you put um, so on Spotify. Show notes is kind of, and when you look the up, um, click the episode, it's kind of like the gist of what they can expect from the episode, right? So it's got to be, you have to think like a copywriter. How are you able to get people to want to listen to this episode in the shortest? um sentences possible clear concise um impactful um yeah that that's the idea and then at the end of the show at, at the end once you have your let's say three to five sentences show notes then you put all the details your socials where they can find you get them to send you a voice message that you can include on your next episode something like you want to play around with you want to make sure that each episode all your details are there because you never know and you don't want people to you want to make it easy for people to contact you you want to make it easy for people to want to do business with you how do you do that just put it all out there um aside from that the show notes is also what you can use once you let's say you have an audiogram um or get a sound bite it would it would help or you prom put like for some people, like for us, we create like different cover art for each episode, just so people will be excited. It's like artsy and stuff. Um, we put it on our Instagram and then whatever show notes we put on Spotify, that's also the, the caption we use on Instagram. So 
that you don't have to think about things all the time, you know, like just um, reuse the content that you already created. I like that. So let's talk a bit about um, the podcast mate before we wrap up. So that is your company. And I love um, on your website, you, you make it so easy. We transform ordinary interviews to immersive audio stories so your audience will pay attention. Yes. I like that. So thank you. Can you can you tell me what does that look like? So so if one of one of these IT guys or me in the future, we say, I need Nash to just produce all this stuff for me. What does that kind of engagement look like? With podcast mate. Yes. So first we're gonna have a consult consultation call where we then I will ask you everything about we're going to really dig deeper about what really is your mission? Because I need to understand how you think, what you want, what you accomplish, what you were trying to accomplish, or the people that you want to connect with and stuff like that. So that's going to be that. Then we'll come up with a strategy and I will walk you through the entire process of what I was like, um, saying earlier about pre-production, production, production post-production, like all these entire process. Um, I would kind of like train you to think that way so you already know because once you already have this like cycle in your head it's going to be easy for you to like keep producing content um so you train yourself you, you train yourself to get into the cycle um and then after that once you um you give us the raw all your raw audio uh, raw files and then we'll do the production for you so we'll do the editing, the sound design. We will help you with like our creative direction, all this. But also we want to make sure that it's not just the go The idea is to help you solidify your message, make it impactful, that your brand will not, or your message will not be watered down because podcast mate came into the picture. The goal is to really help you um, Ensure that, you know, this is your message. When podcast mate comes in, we amplify it in a way that it moves people. Um, whatever movement you are trying to do, whatever movement that you want people to do as soon once they engage or listen to your um episode. Got it. And is the is the price always the same? Is this something that fluctuates based on the the level of involvement? So it's different. Uh, we're a boutique company, so it's always always dependent on what the client needs, what they want, what they want to accomplish, what kind of editing they need. Some editing is quite easy, just like taking out like the ums and ah, just making the audio good. But for a highly produced podcast, if it's an immersive podcast, it's um yeah it, it takes so much time it could take weeks uh because of, we redo over and over we want to make sure that there is no one second that is not like again the mindset is if it does not serve the plot it's out so it's more the taking out that is um that takes time i see and if somebody wanted to begin an engagement with podcast paint where do they go and how do they get started so if they want you, they can check out our website, thepodcastmate.co, or they can email me at nash at thepodcastmate.co, or they can also check out our Instagram, podcastmate.co, at podcastmate.co. Awesome. And uh, I just want to throw out there, Simple Sat. Um, yes. I know that, I believe you worked there. You also helped them with a podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, great company. that. That is a company that MSPs work with. So we, you already understand kind of what my audience yes. in a way is, is doing, which is super cool. Um, what kind of price range? I understand that it could get crazy high depending on how immersive, but like, mm -hmm. I'm sure you've got some people that are on something a little more cost effective, but what kind of price range 
should people expect if they want to engage the podcast mate versus some of these other maybe all they're going to do is cut out the ums and uhs and make the audio quality good and here you go uh for so because our we're, because we focus on a specific clientele or a specific niche um we focus on immersive audio stories so their pricing is on a higher end it can start from 3000 to 10000 um a month by that a month that means four episodes per month but this is not only editing because we also handle we also handle like give produce micro contents out mm -hmm. from yeah we we do like the audiogram we take we pull out so my team will be the one who will actually listen to the episode pull out what we think is really good and then create like a quote post or a carousel on instagram um or like promo videos for the episode so to build anticipation stuff like that and i think the most important thing is the strategy because most people they don't really know how to think about how to it's like you're creating a show now you don't getting started you can just show up like sure but if you want to take it seriously like what we focus on is we're creating a show we're creating branded podcasts for companies and so the mindset is very different because it's like highly produced and it would also reflect with the um, like it's like what you want to put out there will reflect the kind of quality you do with your work. So for example for podcast mate the reason why our own podcast is immersive it's highly produced because we want for our potential clients who are listening to our podcast we want them to think that if th this is what they can do for this for their if this is what they do on their podcast this is also the kind of quality that I will be getting from them. We want to make sure that every single thing that we put out there would reflect the quality um, of our work, that we, we, we deliver a high quality, higher quality than just like taking ums and outs be because, ahs, because everyone can do that. And we want to be um, the go-to people if you think about immersive podcast, narrative podcasting, podcast mate. Um, and... And I just want to clarify, you know, looking at your website, you've got pricing on there. So it's it's not like some some secret. But mm -hmm. I see that you have a package where you will literally do ideation to air. So you will help people um, conceptualize a show and yes. give you creative direction consultation, branding consultation and design, guideline creation. Um You'll, you'll create original music production, intros, mm -hmm. outros, backgrounds. I mean, you are literally, it's not just editing the audio. What you're mm -hmm. saying is you're going to effectively be a producer. You're almost yeah. like the, the one behind the scenes taking just this raw footage and turning it into something that it, it almost never would have been if it weren't for you because you're even going to take it a different direction than any other company could have taken it just because mm -hmm. everyone has their own their own ideas and you know so i i think it's very important for people to realize like yeah podcast mate is on the more expensive side but that's because they're going to take your podcast and literally turn it into something it never would have or could have been without their creativity in the background yeah th that's true because like if, if you if you're a podcaster and you want to deliver something of high quality there's so many things that you need to think about that you're not even aware of you you don't realize that oh actually i need to think about this oh actually i need to have a strategy oh actually i need to do um a pre-launch, a post-launch, follow-up, like all these things. Oh, I need to have micro content. Oh, like the schedule, I need to do this. Like all these things, like you don't know what you don't know. And do you really want to waste your time learning that? Or would you, what is your focus? Is it um, creating the content and have someone who's already, and who's already doing that, who, whose focus is doing that day in, day out? Or do you want to like learn it yourself? So 
that's like, it depends on what the priority is. But if you want to focus on what you do best, and then we'll come in on board and refocus on what we do best. And then we all win. Why? Because everyone is focusing on what they do best. And then you produce high quality. Nothing is like, you know, um, done halfway or nothing is half baked. Everything is just full on. You show up automatically, people will see, okay, there's something about this person, something about this show, there's something about this guest, something about their story. Like, I can feel it. It's different than everyone else. And how I think, I always think about this way. In marketing, I always think about how we, like in Podcast Mate, we don't think about mark. We don't think marketing. We call it fascinate. Why? Because I want to put the idea in my team that we're not marketing. Marketing is a nebulous idea. Nobody knows what it means. But fascinate, easy to remember, easy to understand. When we put something out there, the goal is to fascinate someone. We want to fascinate someone. So, and in order for you to fascinate someone, it's got to be surprising. It's got to be different. It's got to be unpredictable, unexpected. I show so much passion. So, yeah. I love that. Thank you, Nash. I really appreciate you coming on, answering questions. I think, you know, this is the perfect time of year for us to have done this because there are going to be some IT guys that are like, you know what? First of the year, I, I'm going to start this new thing. I, I don't know what the new thing is, but I need to do a new thing. And maybe podcast is the thing. And hopefully we've given them some uh, different things to think about mm -hmm. before they start their podcast. And, you know, literally taking it from ideation to air to post-production to show management and everything else that needs to happen in order to launch a successful podcast. Yes, true. I hope awesome. that um, this gives them the confidence to give them like some, you know, initial nudge to put themselves out there. And like, you never know, you never know what can lead. So like what my friend Nike said, <laughs> just do it. There you go. <laughs> I think that's a perfect statement for us to end on. So <laughs> if you guys are thinking about starting a podcast, uh, as Nash just said, nobody's ever said this before, just do it. Um, or, or who, or who was it? Shia LaBeouf? Just do it. <laughs> right? Got us on a high note. Just do it. Like, don't think about anything else. Get it done. I agree. Well, thanks so much for being here. Hey, guys, if you watched all the way to the end, thank you so much. Uh, please like, subscribe, leave some comments, questions, and I will catch you all at the next episode. Take care.